In this presentation, we are going to look at the joint distribution of two random variables x and y. So here we have the values of x, 1, 2, 3. Here we have the values of y, 1, 2, 3, 4. And here we have the probabilities of each of the joint occurrences. So for example, the joint occurrence of x equal to x equal to 2 and y equal to 1 is 4c, and so on. You notice the way that they're all denominated in terms of some of some value c, even 0c here. Okay, so essentially what we have to do is find the value of c and then find the marginal distributions of x and y. So essentially what we do is we add up all the rows and all the columns. One or the other, but actually it's best to do both. Okay, so 6c plus 4c plus 2c, that actually gives us 12c. So that's a little typo there. That actually is 12c, okay? 3c plus 2c plus c, that gives us 6c, and so on. So we get 6c here, 6c here. So when we add that all up, we get 30c. That necessarily is equal to 1, so therefore one is, c is equal to 1 over 30. Now, we can do it for the, the rows as well. So 6c plus 3c plus 2c plus 4c, that gives us 15c. 4c plus 2c plus 4c plus 0 gives us 10c, and so on. And we get 5c here. Okay. And again, if you add all that up, you should get 30c, and that is equal to 1. So that just double checks it. So essentially what I'm going to do here is just tidy that all up. That's our... That's the joint distribution with the marginal probabilities there on the side. Okay, that's the marginal probabilities there. Okay. Well, correctly, that's the marginal probabilities, that part there. So, uh, yeah, that's it. So that's the marginal probabilities are uh, probability x equal to 1. Let's scroll up there for a second so we have everything in shot. x equal to 1, x equal to 2, x equal to 3. That's 15c, which is, say, 15 over 30, which is 1 half. 10c, which is 1 third. That should be uh, 10c there. Sorry. And that is 1 third. 5c, which is 5 over 30, is 1 sixth. And same for the other side. Y, probability of y equal to 1 equals 12 over 30, which is 2 over 5. And all the other probabilities are 1 fifth for y equals 2, 3, and 4. So that's essentially the, the marginal probabilities of x and y. Now, the next part is as follows. Calculate the expected value of x and the variance of x and show that the covariance of x and y is equal to zero. This actually is quite a long question. Okay, so I'll try and get through it very quickly. But the first thing we have to do is calculate the expected values of x and x squared. So this is just a restatement of the marginal distribution of x there values of x and the probabilities of those values of x. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply each possible, each of these three values of x by its corresponding probability. And that will give us the expected value of x. So one half, this is one half times one, uh, one times one half, two times one third, and three times one sixth. There we have them there. Okay, when we add them up, we get one half plus two thirds plus one half. That is 5 over 3. Okay, uh, the expected value of x squared. Essentially what we do here is with the values of x, we replace them with x squared. So 1 becomes 1. 2 becomes 2 squared, which is 4. And 3 becomes 3 squared, which is 9. So essentially what we're doing here is just squaring our values of x and multiplying it by the probability. We don't do anything with the probability. It's just we change what we are, change the value of x to x squared. Anyway, when we work that out, we end up with 10 over 30. Okay, now, the reason we do that, and if you, in case you're not familiar with this formula, or discrete random variables, the variance of x equals the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x to be squared, as in, there are two different numbers, and the squaring happens at uh, two different places. So essentially, the two different things altogether. 10 over 3 minus 5 over 3 cubed, sorry, 5 over 3 squared 
which works out to be 5 over 9 once you calculate it. So what we're going to do here is calculate the expected value of y also. And we're going to use that in the exact same way. We're not going to calculate the variance of x. We're just going to calculate the expected value of y. There we have it there. Essentially, for each value of y, we multiply it by the corresponding probability and add everything up. So the probabilities were fairly easy to remember. It was 2 over 5 for 1. So here we have 1 times 2 over 5. And likewise, all of the other probabilities for 2, 3, and 4 are 1 fifth. So 2 times 1 fifth, 3 times 1 fifth, 4 times 1 fifth, add them all up, and we get 11 over 5 when we uh, solve that. Now that's going to be important next uh, uh, here shortly. Essentially what we have to do is calculate the covariance of x and y. Actually, we have to show that it's 0. Okay, But what we have to do here is... Uh, calculated out from first, princip first principles. So the formula that we would use is the expected value of x times y, which is the product of x and y, minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y. That's a very important formula. That's how, essentially how we do this. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is actually just state all the possible products of each of the values of, of x and y. So the possible values of x are 1, 2, and 3. Possible values of y are 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the values we can get range from 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay. Now, just as a remark, each of these has a possible uh, probability. For example, this was 6 over... I'll just go write it 6 to sort of say 6 over 30. Okay. Because it just takes up space there. So just like 6, 4, 2, 3, 2, 1. And this was 2, 4, 0. And 4, 0, 2. And that is, and actually just to sort of be clear, that's times uh, one, th uh, 1 over 30. Okay, for the probabilities. Now, this is actually just a sort of quick remark here. That that means that the probability... That it can equal to 9 is actually 0. And likewise the probability of 8 is also equal to 0. So I'm going to, they are actually correctly part of the probability distribution. But I'm going to sort of ignore them from now on. Okay. The probability is not 8 and 9 are 0. So really I'm going to ignore them. So this is what I end up with. With 8 and 9 removed. And essentially what I'm going to do here is like fill up this table here. So the value of x and y is 1, okay, and the probability of that is simply 6 over 30. There we have it there. Now, there's two ways we can get 2, x, y is equal to 2. So they are, when x is equal to 1, and when y is equal to 1, I've actually just taken out, so the probability of that was 4, over 30 and this was 3 over 30 and when we add them together we get 7 over 30 okay uh, likewise the probability of 3 there's two ways we can get 3 and the probabilities were 2 and 2 so 2 over 30 plus 2 over 30 that gives us 4 over 30 and so on for the rest of them and again just to remark the probability of 9 and the probability of 8 are 0. Okay. So that's where we get this table here. Okay. This this column of values. Okay. So what we're going to do is to calculate the expected value of x and y. For each value of x, y, we multiply it by, by its probability. And then we add them all up there. Okay. So 1 times 6 over 30 gives us 6 over 30. 2 times 7 over 30 gives us 14 over 30. And so on. So on. So what we end up with is 11 over 110 over 30, which is 11 over 3. Okay. So that's the expected value of x. That's the expected value of y. Four, uh, 5 over 3 times 11 over 5, 55 over 15, which is 11 over 3. Okay. So when we work it out the covariance, which we're expected to show is equal to 0. We just uh, essentially subtract, that should be a little subtraction uh, minus sign there. Essentially when you work it out, you'll find that 
These two values are equal to each other and therefore the covariance of x and y is equal to zero. Okay. So state with a reason whether or not x and y are independent. Now, usually one of the key tells is to sort of see if the covariance of x and y is equal to zero, which is a positive sign if you want your values to be independent or your variables variables to be independent. But it's not enough. Okay. So x and y are not independent, even though the covariance is equal to zero, and even though some cells uh, would obey this outcome here. So just to be clear here, this is the probability of x, y, and this is the probability of x times the probability of y, okay? So it's very uh, important here to sort of see that the brackets here work completely different. Okay, you might miss it there. So this is one joint probability. These are, this is the product of two different probabilities. Okay, now this has to actually work in each possible case. So, that is 10 over 30. So see here. So probably x equal to 1, y equal to 4, that is 2 over 15, which is actually 4 over 30. Okay, so let's actually just state where I am here, this one here. Okay, now, if they were independent, the marginal probabilities for that, those particular values would give you 4 over 30. But actually, they don't. So they give you a different value. Okay, so it's actually one fifth times one half, uh, one, one over five times one half, one over two, and that does actually gives us one over ten. So in this case, they're not equal to each other. Okay, and that actually disqualifies it as being independent. Okay, so the random variables u and v are defined as follows u is equal to 1 if x is equal to 1 or 3 u is equal to 0 if x is equal to 2 v is equal to 1 if y is equal to 1 or 3 and v is equal to 0 if y is equal to 2 or 4 tabulate the joint distribution of u and v and state with reason whether or not u and v are independent so this actually is what we could do here is use one of these previous tables here. Actually, we'll go back to the start. That one will do, okay? So the values of uh, so it, if you uh, x is equal to one, okay, is those two there? And so that is you. That's u equal to 1, and u equal to 1, and u equal to 0. And for v, that one there, that one there, that is um, v equal to 1. And I'll just circle the rest of, the rest of it there. That would be equal to v equal to zero okay so essentially what we're doing here is we're combining cells into we're combining four cells into one cell okay so the ones i have circled they're going to become one particular cell okay See if we can get rid of that. We can't. This, these are going to be combined into another cell and so on. Okay, so essentially what we have there is we have 12 cells and essentially what we're going to do is collapse them down into four cells. So what we're going to do is just add up those probabilities there. So the ones I have circled in red, 6 over 30, 2 over 30, 0, and 2 over 30, that's 10 over 30. That is the probability of u equal to 1 and v 
equal to 1. So I'll just go back to where we have it there. Now just actually, that's that u equal to 1, v equal to 1 there. So essentially what I have done there is those cells, just combine them into this. Okay. And those are the joint probabilities of u and v, where u is equal to 0 and 1, and v is equal to 0 and 1. Okay. So again, those are the marginal probabilities, those are the joint probabilities, and essentially we see that they're not independent Partly because of the same rationale that I used with the uh, previous one, that the joint probability is not equal to the product of the marginal probabilities. That is to say, uh, 1 over 15, that is not equal to 1 third times 2 fifths. 1 over 15 is not equal to 2 over 5 times 1 over 3, which are the marginal probabilities there. Okay, that's a very long video. We'll leave it there.